So, let's talk about North Korea. Uh, you all are up on the story. President Trump said he was going to walk away from the summit because uh, Pence was... Uh, well, let me back up a little bit. I've been saying that Mike Pence is one of our better vice presidents. And the reasoning is he just didn't break anything. He's really good in public. He, you know, he's professional. He's, you know, he, he's, uh, he's just a very smooth politician in a good way. So I've been saying, yeah, he's just like a perfect vice president. He's, he's boring, but he doesn't break anything. And that's really all you ask for. Then he went on television and talking about North Korea at a very delicate time, made a reference to Libya, which sounds like regime change. Ouch. As mistakes go, that's sort of a 10 out of 10, right? So I'm going to call it like it is, gigantic uh, persuasion mistake. It's, it's like as big as you can get, you know, short of actually starting a war. Uh, that's right up there. So, yeah, they said Libya if they don't behave. So here's the problem. We're trying to put in the heads of North Korea, and Kim in particular, the idea that we can guarantee their uh, safety, that we're credible people. We want them to think about their their awesome future in which they don't get destroyed in war and have a good economy and stuff. And just even bringing up the Libya thing in any context whatsoever is bad, bad persuasion. Now, you can say you can make the same point in a better way. So the point is if we, if we don't find peace, things could turn bad. Fire and fury, our nuclear weapons are more powerful than yours. That's what the president says. So the president does it right. Trump says stuff like, you know, our, we're more ready than we've ever been for military action, right? So these are just objective Statements of truth. Totally good persuasion. Over here, destruction by our gigantic army. We certainly don't want that. Over here, peace, prosperity. North Korea is doing great. Perfect persuasion. You notice also that the president uh, is the, weirdly, just about the only person on the planet Earth who is not North Korean who has not insulted Kim Jong-un in the last 30 days. Right? So President Trump, the most famous you know, insulter of all times, who all of his critics say, no, he's impulsive. He's impulsive. He's impulsive. He doesn't even do any thinking. He just sees people and then insults, starts spewing out of him. It's like, there's no brain there, just... Do I see a person? Oh, there's a person. You, you're fat. You, you're ugly and stupid. That's President Trump, right there. Good imitation, I think. <laughs> Scene. But what we observe is that when insulting somebody is useful, such as running for office, low energy Jeb, useful. Crooked Hillary, useful. Uh, little Rocket Man, useful back then. What is useful for the past 30 days? What's useful is that you treat Kim Jong un with respect while he's doing things that you know could work in everybody's favor. You might not like it. You might still have your private thoughts about, about Kim Jong un, but this isn't really the time for insults. And I think that Pence's reference to Libya, even though it's not a personal insult, is really close to one. It's disrespectful in a way that's essentially an insult. Okay? The president doesn't make that mistake. How is it that the president has gone so long without insulting Kim Jong-un? I don't understand it. It's breaking all of my ideas about the world. Because... He doesn't think, he insults everybody, 
But at the very time that you should not insult anybody, he's the only person who seems smart enough not to do that. It's luck. It's probably luck. Yes, John Bolton made the same Libya mistake. The slight difference, and it's not a big one, it's a slight difference, is that Bolton did it earlier. You know, that, that makes a little difference. But also, Bolton has always been the bad cop. So it was a mistake when Bolton did it, but a slightly lesser mistake than when Pence did it because of timing and who Pence is. You know, Pence should be more aligned with Trump, who is trying to be good cop in this. All right, so I think Pence dropped the ball on this, uh, but in the end, it didn't make any difference because, you know, as we learn what, what was really happening behind the scenes, North Korea wasn't cooperating. They weren't, they weren't showing up for meetings to plan the, the summit. They hadn't really offered anything, uh, or at least enough. Um, so it was just a good time for a walk away. So that gave us, that gave us an excuse to just do a, a little mild reboot. And it looks like the reboot may have been good because North Korea, as of today, uh, started communicating more and President Trump responded positively. Because, do you know why President Trump responded positively to North Korea's positive um, you know, communication to them in the last day? Do you know why? I don't know why. Is it luck again? I don't know why. Why does this keep happening? Scene. Um, so, let me give you my theory of how we got to this point. Because you may be wondering, why is it that North Korea keeps saying, oh yeah, denuclearization, no problem. And then when it comes down to it, we can't, we can't get them to actually agree to denuclearization, even though they, see, they keep saying it. I think it's this. I think it might be, as weird as it sounds, it's a version of Yanni and Laurel. And I think this is what happened, just speculation, all right? I believe that every time that Kim Jong-un talks about denuclearization, he either says directly or he means this in context, yes, I would like to be part of all countries denuclearizing. But then he says, I'd like to denuclearize. And then President Moon of South Korea says he wants to denuclearize. And I think he's serious. He actually wants to denuclearize. So he takes that to America and says, he told me he wants to denuclearize. And, he, and I believe he meant it. And then we check with him, hey, you know, what's, up with, what's up with this? Do you want to denuclearize? And then Kim says, I very much want to denuclearize. I'm totally committed to denuclearizing with, you know, the rest of the world. That's exactly like not denuclearizing because the rest of the world isn't going to get rid of their nukes. So it seems to me that either President Moon and the United States simply heard him differently than what he is clearly saying. Whenever you see his full comments, Kim's full comments in context, there's always that little clause about, yeah, you know, denuclearizing the rest of the world. I'm all in. Um, so that's not really what we had in mind. I think people are just hearing it that way. But I also think there's a possibility that President Moon of South Korea um, knew that we weren't talking about the same thing and got both sides a little bit pregnant. You know, told Kim, yeah, yeah, the Americans seem to like your offer. Let's talk. That's not what happened. Because we didn't like his real offer. We liked the offer we thought we heard, or wanted to hear, that he might denuclearize, you know, on his own. And then I think, you know, I think both sides simply heard the version they wanted to hear. Moon may have known that, that they weren't talking the same language, but here's, here's my charitable opinion of uh, President Moon. 
he might be the smartest player in the game. Pretending to be not the smartest player in the game. Kind of a Kaiser Sosa situation, if you know that reference. Because if what he did was take this little bit of bad communication and Yanni and Laurel and said, yeah, you guys are practically on the same page. Let's talk. Getting us to the point of talking is a huge freaking deal. And let me and let me revise, you know, my thoughts on this. If it turns out that President Moon was saying, you know, President Trump deserves that Nobel Peace Prize if this works out. Let's all get together, let's talk. Yeah, it's really President Trump. He's doing everything here. But I'm glad we got to this point where we're practically on the same page. Let's get in the same meeting. If he did that, and he knew that we were not on the same page, but he knew that talking gets you to the next stage where you might get on the same page, at least talking is a step ahead. If he did that, and he knew what he was doing, smartest guy in the game, maybe. Smartest guy in the game. And Nobel Prize worthy. Uh, I don't know if he shares it or not, but you got to say that if he if that's the way he played it, pretty darn smart. Now, it's also possible that the United States, and I feel this is the case, um, knows that Kim Jong-un did not quite offer what we need him to offer, but also saw it as an excuse to start talking. So we may be pretending we're hearing him differently, just to get in the room, just to just to get the ball rolling, just to get the communication going. So I think there's a lot of pretending that we shouldn't assume is what the the players are actually thinking. <laughs>